Hola. <laughs> Como están? God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just saying up right here. Good morning, those who are tuning in. Good morning, Elizabeth Tyson. God bless you bright and early. How are you guys doing this morning? Good morning, Helen. Helen, Helen Tyson Sr. is on. God bless you. Woo-wee, God is so amazing. How are you guys doing? Good morning, Yolanda. Hey, Amen. Joe Lewis and Mama Teresa. Buenos dias, buenos dias, buenos dias. Oof, today's is powerful. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Danny Castro. Good morning, good morning. God is amazing. Let me get Danny Castro bright and early. We are journeying through the One Year Bible, November 4th. Uh, yesterday, my wife had uh, her friend Cynthia over. It was, uh, they had a great time of worship. Pastor Benny, God bless you. Uh, my wife and, uh, and Cynthia, they had an amazing time of worship. They, uh, they were practicing, and then after they went uh, on uh, online, they went via Facebook Live and then Instagram Live. And so it was an amazing time of worship uh, for them. And uh, if you want to hear that, hear their, um, their, uh, hear them playing, it was, uh, it was yesterday. And so their, their live is, their Facebook, Facebook Live was, uh, was yesterday. So hope you guys, uh, hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys receive from, uh, from their, from their ministry. Good morning, Nicole. Um, I'm excited about today. Ezekiel chapter 10. That's what we'll be reading through uh, 1125. Hebrews chapter 6, 1 through 20. Psalms 105, 16 through 36. And then Proverbs 27. And in, uh, in Ezekiel chapter 11, I want you guys to get the heart of God in here. I want you guys to really grab a hold of what God is, is telling us. What God is telling us through what he told Israel. In the heart of God, this is it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 11. We're going to be reading Hebrews. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 16. And I want you guys to really grab a hold of this because this is God speaking to even to us today, to all uh, humanity. And then chap, uh, verse 16. Therefore, tell the exiles, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Although... I have scattered you in the countries of the world. I will be a sanctuary to you during a time in exile. I, the sovereign Lord, will gather you back from the nations where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel once again. I will be your sanctuary. I will be that even though you are scattered, even though you are scattered, even though you you want, all the people went different places, even though they were in exile, the Lord is still saying, I will be your sanctuary. I will be your hope. I will be your refuge. Come to me. I, the sovereign Lord, will gather you back from the nations where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel once again. In verse 18, when the people returned to their homeland, they will remove every trace of their vile images and detestable idols. And in verse 19, and I will give them singleness of heart. Other verses that says, I will give them an undivided heart. And I will put a new spirit within them. I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart. So they will be they will obey my decrees and regulations. Then they will be truly my, my be my people, and I will be their God. But as for those who long for vile images and detestable idols, I will repay them fully for their sins. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. You see the heart of God in this. You see God's God is saying, I want to bring the people back, and just I want to bring them back to a place. Where they have an undivided heart, where they would uh, worship, they would worship the Lord, that that the Lord would put a new spirit within them, and I would take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart. Isn't that so amazing? You see the heart of God in this. 
You see that God is merciful, that God is full of grace, even though the people, they, they, uh, they follow detestable things, meaning they, they, fell, they were into uh, crazy sins. They, they had their heart towards other idols. They had their, height, their, their hearts towards uh, worshiping the, the, the S-U-N, not the S-O-N. And they were, they were worshiping uh, Molech. They are worshiping uh, different, different gods that the, that the pagan uh, people had, uh, had, a, had, had showed them. And their hearts were enticed with so many different things. But the heart of God is always to bring the people back. The, the heart of God is always to, to say I am your I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God and I I have given you this and it's so beautiful that God is saying look at this is what this is what I desire for your life that you have a new heart that you are a new creation where that the old is gone and all things have become new that's what it means to have a new heart where you say Lord I I'm giving away all my all the idols I am destroying all the idols and God I'm worshiping you with a single heart with a single focus Saying, God, I'm here to worship you. I'm here to give you praise. I'm here to give you praise and thanksgiving. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to have a, I have a new heart, a new spirit. And I love this verse right here. It says, I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart. And that's what God is doing in our hearts. God is giving us a tender God has given us a responsive heart because when, when, when God's word is, is, is declared to us, we're like, yes, Lord. Look, I'll tell you that. Look how many people are, are being responsive to this message. It's going out. It's going out not just to, to Southgate, but it's going out to, to the world. It's going out. This, this Facebook Live is going out to the world. And people's hearts are becoming, are responding to this message. Why? Not because of what I'm doing, but because of what God is doing in this place. That God is saying, God is sending out that message. And he's like, will you respond to this message? Will you respond to what, what is being shared on this, on, this, uh, on this platform called Facebook Live? Are you responding and the Lord, the Lord is saying, this is my heart in this, that people will have a tender, responsive heart. And my prayer in this, that this will grab a hold of those hearts that were once stony, that were once so hardened, that were once so, just so hard, and that it will pierce, it will pierce through the, through the thickest heart, and that it will touch your heart to bring you to a place where you say, God, I need you. God, I desire you. God, I, my heart is becoming tender. My heart is becoming soft. My heart is becoming responsive to the word that is spoken in this place. That my heart is being responsive. And God created me a new heart. Created me a responsive heart. Created me, God, because I want, I want, you, I want you to be my God. It will set the addict free. It would set that drug dealer free. It would set that prostitute free. It would set that person that is dealing with anxiety free. It would set that person that is dealing with anger free. It is in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because the word of God does not go back void. It does not return back void. And it's a message that will pierce the thickest heart. Why? Because it's coming with the power of, the, of God. It's coming in with the, the, the anointing of God penetrating. God saying, I'm here. Look at Although the people have, were scattered throughout the world, the Lord is saying, I am your sanctuary. This is a song that says, make me a sanctuary. I forgot how it goes, <laughs> or else I was going to sing it right now. But, uh, but I know it's something about sanctuary. <laughs> I knew it's something about a sanctuary. God, uh, um, help me be a sanctuary. Something like that. Something in those regards. But that's why I make myself laugh sometimes. Because <laughs> I was like, I was going to sing it, but then I was like, I'm going to butcher the song. 
But God created me of uh, being a sanctuary. Good morning, Nundu. God bless you. You're all the way across the world. I, I, we see you. We celebrate you. But God is, this, this is look, at, look at the heart of God in this. Look at the heart of God. It's so, it's so amazing that God said, I will give you a responsive heart. I will give you a new heart. God could have said, you know what? I'm done with this people. I'm done with them. They, they have defiled. I'm a holy God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoo them away. You, you could. God could have done that. But look at. God is saying, no, return to me. Look how grace, gracious he is. How merciful he is. This is this shows you that, that God is loving. Yes, he needs to he needs to confront that sin. He needs to confront what is going on in your life. He needs to confront because God is a holy, just God. But then at the same time, God is a, 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 a merciful, gracious God that he's saying, return to me. And I will give you a singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take away that their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender so they will obey my decrees and regulations. Then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. From the very beginning, from the very beginning when Adam and Eve, when they, when they decided, when they chose to eat of the forbidden fruit, for, for the, not the forbidden fruit, but from the for, uh, forbidden tree, God is saying, all right, there has to be a way. I'm going to make a way. I'm going to make a way to redeem my people. I'm going to make a way to bring them back to me. And that's why it was, it was prophesied over Adam and Eve that their son, that the, that, the, that the serpent will bite at his heel and that their son will crush the, the head of that serpent. And look at that's a prophecy about Jesus, their son, Jesus, their great, their great, 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 great grandson, <laughs> Jesus, was to be that man that the serpent was going to bite his heel and that he was going to crush the head of that serpent. And you see the redemption power of God. That's what I'm talking about today. God's redemption love for humanity. God's redemption love for humanity is unconditional. It's agape, meaning it's unconditional. God's redemption plan for humanity is so great that we can't even comprehend it. We can't comprehend it. We can, we can try to speak about it. We can try to uh, declare it a little bit, but this, in, this finite mind, this finite thing, but if you experience that, if you and I experience the unconditional, there is no way, there's no denying res about receiving the, that, that, uh, re exper that experience experiencing that experience where you said I am I'm tasting and I'm seeing I'm tasting and I'm seeing and experiencing God's unconditional love for me the redemption plan for humanity how do we do that by by listening to to the message by listening to the word of God being proclaimed what is it what's what's being proclaimed in this hour you got to hear this guys what is being proclaimed in this hour God's redemption plan. God's redemption plan to bring you back, to say, I'm giving you a new heart. But God, my heart is stony. My heart is, my heart is stubborn, God. My heart is stubborn. I, I push you away. Yes, I want to draw close. I want to know you in an intimate way. But yet my heart is pushing you away. Why? Because I'm being distracted with so many things. I'm being bombarded with so many different things. I'm being bombarded by what's going on in the world. I'm being bombarded by, by, uh, by the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I'm being bombarded by all of this. How do I return back to you? And the Lord is saying, look what I can do. Give me a new heart. Oh God, create in us that responsive heart. Create in us that responsive heart that will say, God, you know, yes, I've, 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 drifted, I've drifted away from you. I've drifted away from you. My heart is becoming hardened 
about you because different circumstances. Maybe today, maybe in this season that you're, that you're in right now, maybe your heart has gotten so hardened that you even say, is God even real? Why, why do I follow? Why do I follow his words? Why do I? I've been hurt so bad. Maybe you've been hurt by the church. Maybe you've been hurt by a pastor. Maybe you've been hurt by your family members. Maybe you've been hurt by so many different things and your heart has gotten hardened towards the things of God where you even say, I don't know if I should do this or not. I don't know if I should follow God. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will speak directly to that stony heart. Even though they might be in exile, so to speak, that you will always bring them back to the sanctuary. You will always bring them back home. You will always bring that son and daughter back home. That you will bring the prodigals back home in the name of Jesus. That you will bring your sons and daughters into a place of tenderness, of rejoicing in you, of being responsive towards your word in the name of Jesus. I, hear, I just hear the Holy Spirit just speaking. Whew. Holy Spirit just speaking. And for those who are remaining in the sanctuary, that their hearts will constantly be tender. Their hearts will constantly be responsive. Yes, Lord. Speak to my heart. I pray that my heart will continue to continue be responsive to what God is speaking. That I wouldn't say, that I wouldn't say, oh, I have it all together. That I, would, that I wouldn't say, oh, I don't need this. I don't need to wake up in the morning anymore to, to, to seek the face of God. But my heart, that my heart will constantly that my heart, Mondo Hinojos Jr., that my heart will be constantly responsive. That my heart will constantly be tender. That I won't look at the word and say, oh, I, I read that before. I'm going to go on to the next thing. Oh, I read that before. And it's not penetrating the heart. Or a little sin, a little sin here, a little sin there. But that my heart will be responsive. That my heart will grab a hold of the message that God is sharing with me. And I will say, God, I'm, you are truly my God. Nobody can take that away from me. No, no height, nor dead, nor angel, nor demon can take that away from me. Why? Because what I'm experiencing with the love of God, what, I'm experien what I've experienced with God's grace, mercy, no one can ex nobody can take that away from me. The devil cannot take that away from me. Satan cannot take that away from me. He can try to distract me. He can try to do so many things. But he can't. What I've experienced in this season, it's truly life-changing. And I pray that that will be, that you would get that experience today. That you will get that experience. The Holy Spirit is speaking. All right, 5.50. <laughs> it felt like two minutes just sharing this. But I want you guys to really hear the heart of God in this. To pierce, pierce back you know, behind the curtain. What is, what is God really saying? What is God really saying to his people? Return to the homeland. Return. But he's also saying, remove every trace of vile images and detestable idols. Remove those things out of your life. I don't know how to do that, Lord. We, we read that, like what they did to destroy it. Destroy those things. Destroy those, those bridges. Never, never go back. Say, God, I'm, I'm returning. I'm returning. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Coming back to a heart of worship. That's powerful.
It's amazing. Let's go into uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. As we begin to land this plane, we got a couple minutes to see what see what we're gonna get out of this. Hallelujah. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead of becoming and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again from the fundamentals importance of repentance from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You don't need further instructions about baptism the laying on hands and the resurrections of the dead and the eternal judgment. And so God willing, we will, we will move forward to further understanding. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who were experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come and who then turn away from God. It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance by rejecting the Son of God. They themselves are nailing him to the cross again and holding him up to the public shame. When the ground soaks up the falling rain and bears up a good crop for the farmer, it has, it has God's blessings. But if a field bears thorns and thistles, it is useless. The farmer will soon condemn that field and burn it. Dear friends, even though we are talking this way, we really don't believe it applies to you. We are, we are confident that, we, that you are meant for better things, things that come with salvation. You hear that? We are confident in this, that you are meant for better things, things that come with salvation. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you work for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. You know, I praise God for that. I praise God that in verse 10, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him. I'm showing my love to God by, by sharing with his people. And I pray that that will be your heart. That you will show that you will show how much you right here and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers. But you may say, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a preacher, I'm not I'm not a full-time minister. But you you would demonstrate. The Bible says that we would, they would know that we are Christians by the love that we have for one another. And the love that you are showing other people, you're showing that you truly love God. And how you have shown your love to Him by caring for other believers. I've shared this before. My heart in this, my heart in doing the morning blog, morning devotional, is that all of us, including myself, all of us, you and I, will get closer to the Lord. We'll draw closer, that we will be strengthened in this. That we would, we will grow in this. That we would, uh, we, that we'll know God even, even more in, in such a, such a, such a way that we're like, God, like, this is, this is powerful. And my, my heart in this is that we will all, Flourish that we would all grab. We would just say, God, just that all of us will have that new heart. All of us will have that that tender, responsive heart. And it says, "You show your love for Him by caring for other believers, as you as you still do." Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts. In others, in order to make certain that you have hope for what has come true, then you will not be spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. You hear that? Because of your faith and your endurance. And I will follow, we will follow that example. Let's say you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endures. For example, there was God's promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater to swear by. God took an oath to his name, 
his own name, saying, I will certainly, I will certainly bless you, and I will multiply your descendants beyond the numbers. Then Abraham waited patiently, and he received what God had promised. <laughs> That's amazing. He keeps on going. Time is it? 558. Uh, then a it says, Then Abraham waited patiently and received what God had promised. Now when people take an oath, they call something even greater. And with uh, without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. You hear that? What, is, what did it say in Ezekiel? That even though they were scattered, God is saying, I, was, I, will be their, I will be their sanctuary. I will be their, their refuge. And what are we reading right here? So God has given them his promise and his oath, these two unchangeable things because it's impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. God cannot lie. And if we're running to him for that refuge, if we're running to him to be that sanctuary, sanctuary is a safe haven. The refuge is a safe haven. Refuge is like going under the shadow of the, of the like the, the, the chicks going over to the mother hen and going under that refuge and the mother hen just protecting them. This hope is strong and trustworthy. Anchor for our souls. This is so amazing. Verse 19. This hope is a strong, trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the, cert the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Mm. It's trustworthy, guys. It's something that you can hold on to. It's something that we can anchor. It's, it says it's an anchor for your soul. And if it's an anchor for my soul, then I'm holding on to that. I pray that you will hold on to that. Let it be an anchor to your soul. I don't care if you're a preacher, you're a pastor, you're, let it be an anchor to your soul. If you're hearing this for the first time, may this word May the trustworthy word that is being declared be an anchor for your soul in Jesus' name. Because Jesus had gone there before us. We're going behind the curtain. You hear that? I shared that in the very beginning that we're going behind the curtain and seeing the heart of God in this. And right here it says, go behind the curtain. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner, inner sanctuary. Meaning it leads to God's heart. What is God expressing to us? It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary where the presence of God is, where the heart of God is. And God is saying, return to me. I want you to pierce through that. The curtain has been, the veil has been torn. The veil has been torn. I want you to grab a hold of what I'm saying to my people. Powerful, guys. Hallelujah. And it's already over six o'clock past six. I want you guys to read Psalms 105 and read uh, Proverbs 27. Why? Because I like to keep this within 30 minutes. I like to really, uh, yeah, we've been doing good keeping it under 30, within 30 minutes. I know sometimes we'll go over a couple minutes, but we've been doing good keeping it 30 minutes. Why? Because it leaves you hungry for more. It leaves you hungry for more. Like, I want more of this. I want more of what is being shared. And it gives you like the opportunity to you, you yourself getting into the word. You're like, what is God speaking to me? What is God showing me? It leaves you hungry for more. That's why even to I want to share uh, certain parts of the of the scriptures, not, not to take it out of context, but to really uh, hone in to what God is to the to the heart, to the heart of it, to the heart of the message. And I want you guys to read it. I want you guys to, to read. And to follow along, I, I sent out the one year Bible audio. But let's pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name. And then uh, may the Lord bless your body, your labor, your emotions, your spiritual, social. I have something else to share. Um, my phone is still not working. So I, I have been sending out the one-year Bible messages. Some people are not uh, able to receive it. And so uh, this week, definitely, I'm going to be getting a new phone. And um, yeah. So keep me in prayer in that because I want I want this to work because I, I send out the one year Bible audio and the, the link to the devotional uh, to closest I send out it's, it's 69 people 70 oh, close to 70 people I, I say close to 70 people that I send out the message to and some people have not been able to receive it but uh, that's why it's important for you guys to help me to, to share this message and uh, keep me in prayer in that because it, it is frustrating it's already been a, a few weeks already and uh, it is frustrating, but I know that God is faithful, that the messages will go out. But uh, it's just like, <clears throat> you know, I, the Lord put it in my heart to send it out. I want people to receive it. I want people to to receive the message. I want people to um, hear this. So praise God. Thank you guys for tuning in. May the Lord bless your body, your labor, your emotions, spiritual and social. Have a blessed day. Thank you guys. Thank you for those who are tuning in live. Those who are tuning in on the replay. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys so much. And the Lord sees you. The Lord celebrates you. And uh, also, too, if you don't have a home church or if you'd like to visit Southgate, California, we would love to have you guys. We'd love to, to welcome you guys. Everybody there is welcome. Come on in and come and experience the, 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 love, the power, the love, the, the life-changing power of God. It convicts us of sin. It's like, ah, that hurts. <laughs> but God shows us his love. God shows us behind the inner curtain. God shows us that his heart in this, he said, return to me. I am your sanctuary. That is, that's powerful. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a blessed day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. It's Friday already tomorrow. Go, let me pull out my hair. My hair already out. But amen. God bless you guys. Have a blessed day. Now I'm just going on. God bless you guys. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow. See Dios quiere. Bye.